Today's lesson is on equations of lines using point-slope form. So first of all, I'd like to review this formula with you, uh, point-slope form that you learned in Algebra 1. It's y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. m represents the slope, and the x1, y1 is just any point that's on the line. Let's go ahead and see how it works. First of all, remember that you can always pause the video and take time to uh, try the questions first. Write the equation of the line through 2, negative 3 with the slope of negative 1 half. So we have a point and a slope, and I'm going to call this x1, y1, and there's my slope. So I'm going to write down the formula and then start to plug into it. And then we're going to simplify once we get everything plugged in. So y minus y1. I like to use parentheses just to help keep things uh, organized. And 2 is my x value. You don't have to use parentheses. just kind of helps keep it organized. So y plus 3 equals negative 1 half x minus 2. Now we're going to use the distributive property. So negative 1 half x. And then negative 1 half times negative 2. Whenever you have a whole number, you can remember that you can write it over 1. And now negative times negative is positive, And you multiply the numerators together and the denominators together. So we just get 1. Also, you could have just canceled out the 2s. Now I'm going to uh, subtract 3 from both sides. And so I just wrote this um, right here in slope-intercept form. All right. Example 2. Write the equation of the line through 3, 5, and negative 2, 3. So we have a choice, obviously, always, to use point-slope or slope-intercept form, but I'm going to practice using point-slope form. So we've got a couple points, but we don't know the slope, so I'm going to find the slope using this formula. Hopefully, you're getting pretty good at using this one. So 3 minus 5 over negative 2 minus 3. That gives me negative 2 over negative 5, which is 2 fifths. And now I can pick one of these points. I'll just go with the first point and let that be my x1, y1. So now I always like to write the formula. And then start to plug things in. So I have y minus 5, because I'm using this point, And the slope is 2 fifths, x minus 3. Now I have uh, y minus 5. And I'm going to distribute. So I have 2 fifths x minus, when you multiply fractions, you do numerator with numerator and denominator with denominator. Now I'm going to combine like terms. So I'm going to add 5 to both sides. Ooh, small problem here. I do not have common denominators. So I'm going to make 5 my common denominator. Notice 5 over 5 is just 1. So I haven't changed the value. And now this is 25 over 5. And now I can combine these two a little easier. Remember when you add or subtract, you have to have a common denominator. 
So 25 minus 6 is 19. So that's 19 fifths. And that is the larger number was positive. So my answer is positive. Just a quick review on adding and subtracting fractions. So that's the equation of the line that um, passes through those two points. If I were on a test, I would actually graph it and kind of see if that line goes through there. That intercept would be approximately, uh, let's see, that would go in three and four fifths. So that's almost four. And you could kind of estimate up to over five. And you could see if you actually pass through those two points. Let's review. Parallel lines have equal slopes. So for example, if the slope of one line is four, then the line parallel to that would also have a slope of four. And perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes. Opposite, so opposite means change the sign. Like the opposite of negative eight would be positive eight. Uh, reciprocal means to flip it. So for example, you have two fifths, the reciprocal of that would be five halves. So when we say perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal slopes, that means change the sign and flip it. So for example, we had a slope equals to three fifths. The perpendicular slope, remember that symbol, would be negative five thirds. So opposite and reciprocal. Let's remember um, our formula right away. Um, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. In order to use this formula, we need a slope and a point. We already have a point, x1, y1. And now I need a slope. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out what's the slope of this line. And since it's in standard form, negative a over b is the quickest way to get there. a is 1, and b is negative 4. Negative over negative is positive. So the slope of that line is 1 fourth. So the parallel slope is also 1 fourth. So I'm going to plug 1 fourth in for m. I'm going to plug in negative 8 for x1. And y1 is positive 1. And let's go ahead and simplify. Uh, I need to distribute. So I have 1 fourth x, and then that's just going to be 2, right? 1 fourth times 8 is 2. And now I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Okay, write the equation of the line through 0, 4 and perpendicular to y equals 3, 2 thirds x minus 5. The first thing I notice is that this is a y intercept. Anytime x equals 0, now I know b equals 4. So I don't want to use point-slope form. In this case, I want to use slope-intercept because I have a y-intercept for free. So that's the beauty in knowing more than one way to do problems. Perpendicular. So my slope here is 2 thirds. So perpendicular slope would be negative 3 halves. 
So now I can just say negative 3 over 2, x plus 4. Final answer. Remember, if x is 0, this is automatically a y-intercept. Final example. Write the equation of the line through negative 2, 3 and parallel to the x-axis. Let me think about this for a moment. Negative 2, 3 is here. And I want a line parallel to the y-axis. Well, this is the y-axis here. So parallel would be this line right here. Um, the equation of that line is going through negative 2. So this equation is simply x equals negative 2. Remember, vertical lines are x equations. Remember that. Vertical lines are x equations.